Thank you, and buenos dias. I um, do have to practice my Spanish once in a while. Um, I want to share a little bit about some of the things that are happening in South America, and um, particularly some of the how some of the partners are engaging in vocational training and um, and how that's sort of impacting what they're doing over there. Um, so by this I mean that individuals and teams are um, empowering others with knowledge and skills to enable them to um, be more effective in their communities and to generate an income like we've heard about already. Um, this income enables individuals to support their families, to be freed from the concern about their finances and to focus more energy on serving others. There are a number of partners in South America who are doing really great work in evangelism, discipleship, youth work, church planting. Um, that's really amazing and really encouraging to see what they're achieving. But the reality is for some of these is that um, they don't have too much in reserve for an emergency. Um, they're so generous with their resources and time that if like a medical situation or an issue with a vehicle comes up that can really make a big impact on their budget which is um, a real challenge for them so sometimes Bright Hope can step in and help them through this time but we really want to see um, the move more into a, um, a bivocational model which is something Jerry's going to talk about a bit later and we've heard a little bit about the concept it's basically the idea of having an income of some sort for a project that can generate income, as well as their so-called spiritual work. And, and I think that, um, like we've heard as well today, that income generating work is worship as well. It is the spiritual work, as well as the church planting, the discipleship. It all has a spiritual component to it. Um, so when there's a situation like um, like this where a partner has an income, it means they've got some resources, both time and money, in reserve to help others um, to impact their communities more effectively. Um, so we desire to see our partners really thriving, um, which is something that Fraser mentioned last night, um, in all areas of their life, reflecting Christ's love and fullness of life, that not that they're just scraping by and what they do. And it's a model, um, I sort of went a step further and found a verse to support it. Um, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, um, where Paul encourages believers to work with their hands, and he says, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so you will not be dependent on anybody. Um, and earlier in chapter 2 of First Thessalonians, Paul described how he worked not to be a, a burden on anyone. So that's all just a bit of background in terms of, of the vision of what we want to see in South America particularly, but I think in all of Bright Hope's work. Um, so I want to share um, a couple of stories now. Um, a number of years ago in Bolivia, a dairy farm was set up in, um, on a block of land, a small town called Kamiri. And Bright Hope's been involved in this area for um, for decades, really, and sort of that period of time we were talking about where Bright Hope gets engaged is that development. Um, Fraser mentioned that last night, so it's it's decades now. I think it's over 20 years. So you can see the milking shed here. Um, there's a number of cows that they milk um, every day, and this is mostly run by a, um, a really gifted young man called Jaime. And here he is uh, examining his crop. Um, John could probably give you more insight on that than I can. Um, Jaime actually spent a year in New Zealand, though, um, on a farm in the North Island studying some farming techniques, um, which he's gone back and, and applied to what he's doing. So um, almost as good as South Island farming techniques. <laughs> 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 so some, um, some of you may know Jaime, um, so he did spend some time here. He also spends some time travelling around Bolivia, um, 
discipling other believers, um, sharing about the Lord. He, he does a lot of teaching. He's a really gifted teacher. Um, he's a great musician and a really, really hard worker. Um, he's really well regarded in the um, community for his knowledge on um, breeding in particular um, and artificial insemination and various stuff that not being a farmer I don't fully grasp. Um, <laughs> but um, just an, an indication really, um, he's a great example of someone who has that balance of, of working but doing ministry as well. Um, we did, Bright Hope actually doesn't partner with them directly, but we're connected with the, the farm property and we have a lot to do with him. So he's a really great guy. Um, we also partner with Tino and his wife Nelga and have done for, for many years now. Um, Tino kind of mentors Jaime and is also involved with the farm and does a lot of evangelism and traveling around Bolivia um, mentoring small church plants. So on that same property, um, there's a Bible training school. And there's a picture here that shows some of the students from last year, which uh, Kevin and I and Carl and Margaret got to visit. Um, so Tino and Nelda oversee this Bible training, um, along with others who come along to teach different classes. The students come from all around South America and study church and missions and um, learn about the Bible and, and get a real passion for, for sharing the gospel with their communities where they come from. Um, I've met a number of the students and they're really passionate young people and a lot of them have gone out to, to do great things in their communities. Um, but as well as that Bible training, they get some um, practical experience, they have work duties on the farm, um, and this hopefully enables them to understand the idea or the concept of bivocational work, which is ministry going hand in hand with some sort of practical work. Um, I want to just talk a bit more about a young couple who both completed the Bible training uh, course in the community. This is Eli and Raquel. Um, and they were recommended to us by Tino, his really passionate followers of Jesus. They've um, located themselves in a very small rural town called San Juan. Um, it's many hours from anywhere. Kevin can actually probably tell you about the condition of the roads in that area and um, how our backsides failed after sitting down for many hours through a, a muddy, windy road trying to get there. We didn't actually make it in the end. We got halfway and they had to come the other half. Um, so they're really, uh, they've chosen to locate themselves in this really small village. At the time they moved there, there was about seven evangelical Christians. Uh, they've been there two or three years and they have a really thriving small church of 25 to 28 adults and a great um, youth ministry with 30 odd kids every week um, and um, seeing some, some real fruit in their community. Um, the kids meet on a local soccer field and get rid of a bit of excess energy, but also hear about um, Jesus as well. In fact, there was a comment, one of the girls said to Raquel that, um, Raquel, you know more about the Bible than the local priest. Uh, so there's a lot of Catholicism in the, the area, but um, Raquel and Eli are building some great relationships, particularly with the young people there. Um, but what they actually do is a um, Bright Hopes help them purchase some carpentry equipment. Um, so it's fairly simple equipment and, and fairly um, primitive, but Eli works on local timber from some of the forests around the area, produces uh, beehives, uh, chicken boxes, some really nice timber flooring, um, and he's able to do that um, with Bright Hope assisting in purchasing this equipment, but he's now able to support his family's needs and and it's grown to a point where he's um, able to contribute to others as well. So he's doing really well. This is a great example, in my view, of a couple doing that bivocational ministry with 
an income from the carpentry shop, um, but also making a real impact on their community uh, for Jesus. Um, another offshoot of the property and community is a technical school, um, which Bright Hope has helped with the, some of the tools that you see there. This is uh, Pepe and Ephraim. Uh, Pepe is actually Tino's son, and he's a, a trained auto mechanic, and he specialises in um, fuel injection, ABS braking, um, auto electrics. And he's recognised a need in Bolivia for um, skilled people who can work on this technology on vehicles. So they've come up with this idea to provide training for, for young guys who have um, kind of a mechanical mindset to give them a, a skill set so they can get work in and support themselves and their families. So the students that um, go through the Bible school have the option of, of doing this technical school as well. So again, it's hand in hand with um, a practical skill which can provide them with an income and, um, and the spiritual element to what they're doing. So last year, 12 students completed the course. Um, two or three of those were from, had, had done the Bible school previously. Um, the school's also recently got a government accreditation, so it's a, a recognised qualification that the students get. Um, so we're really looking forward to seeing this programme grow and um, help others provide a, um, or gain a skill that can provide them with an income and empower them to help others. Um, so in summary, we really believe that vocational training is an important strategy and um, to see Christians uh, reach the lost and do that in a sustainable way.